What's going on guys? This is Dan from The Recreational Engineer and today I'm here with the Queen's Formula SAE Design and Race Team. These guys design, test, and race a complete open wheel race car from scratch every year against other universities here in Canada and in the United States. It's always a little bit nostalgic coming here for me because this is where I got my start in engine development as well as general manufacturing, but it's always awesome to see that these guys are absolutely killing it without me looking over their shoulder. Um, today, I am here with Mr. Matt Schmidt, who is the project lead for all things carbon fiber on the race car. He's gonna show us some pretty awesome stuff today. Hey guys, my name is Matt Schmidt and I joined the Queen's Formula team back in 2011. In my first year on the team, I worked a little bit with carbon fiber parts, but I really expanded my interest and knowledge base in the subsequent years when I got to head up my own section. On our car, we use a ton of carbon fiber parts, all the way from the bodywork to the wings to the driver's seat and to the intake plenum, with many, many more to go. Today, we're going to go through the process of creating a carbon fiber part. That includes the design, the manufacturing, the, uh, the machining, and finally the layout. Let's head over to the computer lab, and I'm going to show you guys the very first thing that we do when we design any carbon fiber part. So in front of me here, we have a section of one of our old front wings. This wing is made with carbon fiber and a solid foam core. Carbon is really nice because you're able to make almost any shape that you can imagine without some of the weight and other drawbacks of metals and other materials. Today, what we're going to do is make a closeout for our CO2 canister on our shifting system. This closeout needs to be both rigid so we can mount the CO2 canister and encompassing so that we can use it as a heat shield to protect this against the engine. So one of the first things that we need to do when we're going to create our part is figure out what type of mold we're going to use. We have two options, either a male or a female mold. Now for a male mold, what you're going to do is lay up carbon over top of the mold itself, while in a female mold, you're going to lay carbon inside the mold surface itself. Now for our part, we're lucky enough to be able to choose whether or not we're going to use a male or a female mold, but not every part is going to give you that freedom. Sometimes, just based on the geometry, it's going to force you to do one or the other. For our situation though, we need a nice smooth surface underneath the part so we can put a gold heat shield uh, on it so it protects it against the engine. So we're going to go with a female mold for our part. So in Queen's Formula, we use a CAD program called SolidWorks. Dassault Systems is nice enough to sponsor us this program so that we're able to design and test all of our components in CAD to make sure that they fit and work before we actually go out and build them in the shop. On the screen right now, we have our CO2 closeout that I've designed. I'm not going to run you through the entire process of designing this, clo uh, this closeout, but what I'm going to do is just show you some of the features. I've made this closeout using surfaces right now so that I can have a very, very accurate representation of where our final mold surface is going to be. That way, when we take it into Mastercam after, I can use my proper offsets for my material thickness and have our part mold be exactly the right size that I want. If I unsuppress our CO2 canister, you can see how it fits inside. We have it necking up where the neck of the canister is, but we also have a little bit of an extension back here at the other end where we're going to use this part of the carbon to mount to the frame. So one of the common misconceptions about CNC machining is that you can take your part directly from SolidWorks and just go and make it. What we need to do actually is use a CAM software, which is computer-aided machining, and tell our machine how we actually want it to make our part. So for our, uh, for our team, what we use is Mastercam. And on the screen right now, I have the dark pink, which is our part that we've imported, and our translucent material, which is the stock setup that we're going to use for this part. Now if you look at this one end over here, you can see that our part is sticking outside of the stock. That's just because we're going to have a two-part mold so we can use uh, the leverage from this end to release our part pretty quickly from the mold. Now, what I've done on the left over here is create some tool paths that are going to machine our part. This is just telling uh, the machine where it needs to go. If I unsuppress them all, you can see all these lines where the tool is going to be moving throughout our part. What we can do to verify to make sure this is the correct uh, actions that we're taking, we can play back this live in order to see uh, how our part is going to be made.
Perfect. It's all done. We have a nice surface finish and we're good to take this to the machine. All right, so now that we've had Matt show us the ropes for all these carbon fiber design and prep quirks, we're ready to get on out to the shop, get all of our tools picked out and our machine set up and start machining these molds. So behind us here, we have a VF3 mill. This guy is what we're gonna use for machining our parts today. Best thing about it, it has a very, very big table surface, so we're gonna be able to fit all of our parts in no problem. Yep, and before we get to any milling operations, the first thing we need to do is select all of our tools and then get them put in the machine. So let's get to that right now. We're going to start our program by running this half inch flat end mill. That way we can get through most of the material removal pretty quickly and not waste too much time. We're going to use this quarter inch ball end mill to get in some of the really tight corners at each end of our part. We're going to run an extended half inch ball mill to get our finishing pass after we've roughed out the entire operation. And we're going to use a center drill and a quarter inch drill to put our four holes in. This center drill is really rigid, so it's going to be able to align our initial hole perfectly. And this quarter inch drill is going to go all the way through and make sure that we get the full depth of uh, drilling that we need. So we're going to put our part in the center of this vise. That way it's going to be held nice and securely for when we want, when we want to machine it. Just going to clamp down, making sure it looks all square in here. We'll get a nice little level and we'll make sure that it looks aligned. Zero degrees, perfect. Ha <laughs> ha. 